So this is example three in our mathematical proof topic. Uh, hopefully you've had a look at the introduction, in which case we had a look at uh, the structure of proof and the implication statements. That was in the introduction to mathematical proof video. And examples one and two uh, were looking at not proof but disproof uh, by counter example, which is simply a case of finding a particular instance when the conjecture doesn't work and that's all we need to do to blow the conjecture out the water and say it's false. Proving something is true uh, is a little bit more intricate. We have to demonstrate that the, the, the conjecture works for every single possible value or instance. Okay, So in other words, we can't just say, well, it works for n equals 2 or works for when we're dealing with uh, whole numbers. It depends on what the conjecture is. Uh, the first thing we're going to have a look is the idea of direct proof. It's one that you're probably most common with because that's when maybe your teacher has uh, started off with something that you know, a formula or a rule or an idea, and has manipulated it, has changed it using algebra or introduced some substitutions to then create a new formula or rule which we can then go on and use, whether it's uh, dealing with the, 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 the gradient uh, of a line uh, from from two coordinate points. The formula that we use for that, we can derive from uh, from certain things. So that's you maybe you come across that. Uh, we're going to have a look at what's involved in direct proof. So we use algebra to work from the start to the finish. The start, might, I might call that the, the given or the, something that we know is true already, okay? Something that's already been proven true and then we, we want the goal down at the bottom, okay? The idea, the thing that we're trying to get to and the idea is that we we either, something, we introduce lines usually of algebra for direct proof which we know to be equivalent or implied in all of these things and then we can see here's the journey from the conjecture to the end point. So if that's the case, we have to remind ourselves at the end that, well, okay, all these steps have been proven to be true because our algebra is good. So if the given is true, which we expect it to be, then we have shown that the goal is true as well. Okay. So before we do the first example uh, of it, I would just want to add a little bit about some common representations. We're going to have a look at conjectures that often involve odd and numbers, even numbers, consecutive integers and stuff. So I would want a wee quick reminder, you may already be familiar with this. Um, how do we represent an even number algebraically? Well, for any integer, uh, if I were to call it an integer n, so n is an integer, it belongs to the set of integers z, okay? Then even n could be odd, n could be even, but we always get an even number when we double n because uh, 2 times n would be an even number. Any time we can have a common factor of 2 at the begin beginning of an expression, we know that it's an even number because all even numbers are multiples of 2. So I can represent an even number by the, the term 2n as long as we indicate that n is a member of the set of integers. And similarly, an odd number would be one more or less than an even number. So what I could say that an odd number would be 2n plus 1, given that n is a member of the set of integers, or I could represent it as 2n minus 1. So if n as a number itself was 4, uh, double 4 is 8, add 1 is 9, so 9 is odd, or 8 subtract 1 is 7, we know that either one of these is an odd number. So that's a really common way of representing odd or even numbers and we can develop that a little bit with the idea of say consecutive uh, integers, consecutive even or odd numbers using the same idea. Uh, so we could write well, two consecutive integers. Uh, well it kind of depends because that means two numbers that are uh, next to each other like three and four are consecutive, eight and nine are consecutive. Uh, but interestingly if we're using the, la the language of odd and even um, we could say that, uh, so 2n would be, uh, we, you know, we could say n and n plus 1, okay? We could say n and n plus 1 are consecutive integers, but very often we want to keep this language of uh, odd and even. So I would say that 2n is a number and uh, 2n plus 1 is also the next number up, or 
actually, we might have to say 2n minus 1 and 2n are also consecutive numbers. We start off with an odd and then we get the next number up, which is, uh, sorry, start off with an even, next number up's odd, or we start with an odd and the next number up's even. It's kind of a bit strange that we kind of have to sometimes think about considering both cases. Consecutive even numbers isn't so much uh, of an issue because we could say, well, it's really important that when we define things, remember that we're defining it as um, saying, okay, n is a, a member of the sub uh, set of integers. Really important that you write that down to explain what n is. Two consecutive even numbers, I'm going to use a different letter than n. Uh, so we could say, uh, I'm going to say 2k and so the next even number up, of course, would be two more than that. So uh, 2k and 2k plus 1 are consecutive even numbers where k is an integer. And consecutive odd numbers, well, we could say that 2k at minus 1 and 2k plus 1 are consecutive um, odd numbers. Okay, 2k plus 3 is the next one up, 2k plus 5 is the next one up from that because it's there's always a, a, a gap of 2 between uh, consecutive even and odd numbers. So that's the kind of language that we're going to be using in some of these direct proofs. So let's look at example 3, uh, which says prove that the product of two consecutive numbers is always even. Prove that the products are multiplying two consecutive numbers is always even. You can see I've just put the little box up there with the kind of root map that we've got. And one of the first things you should do when you've got conjectures like this is to just make sure that it works with numbers. And that's just to make sure that you can't find a, a counter example quickly. Um, but it also uh, helps us to kind of frame what it is that we're trying to think about here. So prove the product of two consecutive numbers. Well, for instance, uh, three and four are consecutive numbers, so 3 multiplied by 4 is equal to 12, which is even. Okay, so if two consecutive numbers are multiplied, we've got an even product. Uh, let's take uh, a number like 8 and 9. 8 and 9 are consecutive, and we multiply them together, we get 72. Now that's an even number. Now remember that the, the def definition of an even number is that you can take a, a common factor of 2, or it's divisible by Two. So in each of these cases, we could write our product like that, just to emphasize the fact that it's it's even. So we'll find it works for two cases, and we could write down a hundred or a million uh, cases where that's always true, but we're not actually proving it's true for all numbers just by picking uh, two pairs of numbers. So we need to introduce some algebra here. Um, so you notice here that in the first example, three is odd, and the second one, uh, eight is even. So Really, to cover our bases, we want to think about what happens if the first number is odd and what happens when the first number is even, because there might even be a difference there. You've got to cover all your bases. So let's look at the first number uh, odd. Okay, first uh, number uh, odd. Okay, so the first number is odd. We can say that the consecutive numbers... We'll just write in let, let consecutive numbers be. Uh, now, an odd number, we'll do 2n minus 1. And our next number up would be 2n, where n is an integer. So the product, so this is our kind of effectively our, uh, our, our given. The product of that would be 2n minus 1 times 2n. Okay, the given. The goal is to show that it's an even number. And in other words, we want to try and make a common factor of 2. So if we multiply out, we can write an equivalent line. So I've got an equal sign. That gives us 4n squared. We're multiplying out 2n by 2n. And then negative 1 times 2n is negative 2n. We can also then factorize that with a common factor of 2 and get 2n squared minus in, in bracket. So these are all equivalent to each other, so I've put equal signs. Because we've now got a, an expression which has a common factor of 2, I can't really put equals an odd number, but it implies it's an odd, it's, a, it's an even number. 
um, because it's got a, a multiple of two. It's a two is a common factor, which implies that the number is even. So if you look at the table, we we, I, we got to the point where given implies a goal. So we started off with the, the product. We've got our goal. So we just have to remind ourselves, um, as we'll do in a moment, that because th these numbers are consecutive, then the product is even. But let's just double check what happens if the first number is even. Does that make a difference? Well, uh, we could argue that it doesn't. So let our consecutive numbers be. I'm just going to have an odd, an even number first, and then the next number up would be odd 2n and 2n plus 1, where n is an integer, which means that the product in this case would be at 2n multiplied by 2n plus 1, which we can uh, write down as 4n squared plus 2n, which has a common factor of 2. And that implies, because 2 is a common factor, it implies that this expression must be even In other words, in both cases, because n is any integer, um, which is an infinite set, it means that no matter what uh, the value of the number is, if we multiply the two consecutive numbers together, it will always produce an even number. That's a, a direct proof because it shows that for any potential value of n, uh, the product is even. So we can finish off by kind of going with the idea that given is that the, the numbers are consecutive, um, so we can say given uh, the numbers are consecutive, consecutive, their product is even. Because, of course, the product of all two numbers is not always even. In this case, it's, it must be that the numbers are consecutive, and that's the given. That's the, the assumption at the beginning that they're consecutive. Therefore, we've shown that the product is even. We can say, therefore, the conjecture is true. It's always a nice thing to, because it's a proof. Therefore, the conjecture is true. And uh, in classical times, you might see the three letters Q, E, D at the end of a proof quad erat demonstrandum, which means demonstrated without error. Uh, that's in Latin, of course. Uh, it's been replaced in more modern proofs by uh, simply a, a square, uh, an empty square. So if you, if you look at mathematical proofs in some texts, you'll see the little square at the end. It just means uh, that's me done it. I, there you go. Okay, end of story. Uh, so that's our first proof. Um, we've always just got to cover all the bases. So we're going to go and have a look at a proof of Pythagoras' theorem in example four. So check that out as well. I hope that's been helpful.